Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Layer Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a Bath & Body Works White Barn Candle Company haul and first impressions review. So I have 10 three wick candles and four single wick candles of which there's a mix of some returning favorites, a couple of new and a couple of new to me scents that I'll just give a quick first impression on those. And if you're new here, welcome. The mission here for me at Touch Flower Twice is to share my love and passion for home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enriching the scent memories that you create. One of the ways to do that is of course through videos like this, the haul and first impressions review. Also do brand introductions. We'll do in-depth sniff reviews where I really go into one candle deep into it, analyze it, talk about the fragrance blend, talk about the performance, try to understand what are the notes, what do they mean, and do a little bit of educating along together of what is galvanum, what is ambergris truly, what is the difference between a peach and an apricot, to really understand what are we sniffing, what do we like, and then sometimes I'll go a step further and do an in-depth sniff comparison review, and in that you're going to be comparing a fragrance or blend to other existing candles that you may already know, you may already have, so you can really start to understand not just what do I enjoy or not enjoy and truly more what does this smell like regardless of what my opinion is of it but today we're here to do everyone's favorite welcome to August welcome to fall that is most I think not all but most home fragrance fans enthusiasts favorite time of the year fall and autumnal home fragrance is even for the casual enthusiast really one of the biggest times of the year where people start to cozy up, they get into the fun, you know, fall that we're going into and start to dig into burning candles if they're not the year round burners like of course most of us who are talking about candles here on YouTube likely are. So we're gonna start the haul and first impressions review digging into the 10 three wick candles, then we'll go into the four single wick candles. There is a mix of classics, returning scents and new and new to me. So we'll start here with just a, a classic, always comes back at this point, with the name Cinnamon Spice Vanilla. This was originally, of course, Cinnamon Sugared Donut. came out in 2011 with Slack & Co. during the Slack & Co. era at Bath & Body Works, and it has barely changed. It's pretty much the same scent with a different name as it was back then. This is in the Neutrals collection. Not super exciting for fall, but it's out there, and I really like to have this one every year because it is so sweet and comforting. Notes on this one, of course, fresh ground cinnamon, sugar crystals, Tahitian vanilla bean. They would also say when it was under the packaging of cinnamon sugar donut, it would be the sugar crystals, it would be the freshly baked cake donut, that sort of thing. And it's just, it's so sugary without being cloying. It's not like a caramel drippiness. You've got the fresh powder of that bright dried cinnamon and that freshly baked cake donut where it's almost like you're at an apple orchard and they have those sort of cider donuts. This doesn't have apple to it, so it's just a cinnamon sugar donut. But if they're, you know, coming out of that little conveyor belt, they dipped into the hot oil, they dunk them into that cinnamon sugar mixture, and that's exactly what this smells like. It's a classic, can't go wrong with cinnamon spiced vanilla. Then perhaps my favorite autumnal scent, at least early autumn scent, is in fact autumn. Don't love this packaging. I think Past years, it's been more outdoorsy, more sort of conceptual looking. This is fine, but they've also done packaging similar to this before that was much better where they actually had a metal leaf on the lid that kind of came further down in front of the label and it was really nice. This is only okay, but buying it very much for the scent. Notes on this one, bright red gala apple, juicy fig, eucalyptus leaf, and fir balsam. Autumn for me is the oftentimes the very first autumn or fall scent that I will burn. Typically now, by August 1st, I start to do the transition into some fall scents. For review purposes, I've been burning some in July, but really traditionally, August is when I start to go into it. Because for me, it's like, okay, I don't get that many months before you jump into sort of some of your Christmas and holiday scents. So I want a good August, September, October for my falls, November, December, January for my Christmas, my winters, my holidays, and then more of a February, March, April, spring and May, June, July for the summer months. There's obviously overlap, but that's generally what I do. This is perfect because it is still bright. There's a juiciness to it from, though it's not on here, there's some pomegranate in here, I believe. The eucalyptus and the fir balsam give you a little bit of that outdoor, like you're walking through a park, not necessarily the woods or forest, but you're walking through a park with big trees. The bright apple, is certainly there, but it's not an apple heavy scent for me. It really has a little bit of that sweet powdery fig, a little bit of green from that, a little bit of astringency from the eucalyptus leaf and that bright, almost resinous fir balsam. It's just, again, the perfect 
transitional into autumn. I love this one. And actually, this is the second and third <laughs> candle of the 10 because I bought two of these because it's one that I will definitely burn through the season. Then move on to, at this point, this is a classic scent for sure, returning favorite pumpkin apple. I do like this packaging. I think the white barn packaging is, you know, classy as far as Bath & Body Works goes. It's just this matte, deep color. You got this simple metallic gold lid. I think it works. Notes on the pumpkin apple, of course, red delicious apple, fall pumpkin, fresh ground cinnamon, and clove buds. This one came out first, I want to say, maybe 2013, something like that. Of course, this is your, this is kind of like, I, I believe their answer to the type of blends that Yankee Candle fall and autumn historically was very, very popular with in let's say the 90s and early aughts. And that is sort of that craft store dried vibe. So think almost like your potpourri, but not, you know, not, not your mom's potpourri from 1992 sitting in, the, in the, the, the powder room sink, but it does have that sort of a bit of the fresh apple, pumpkin, not so much really, but the spices. So it's a kind of a spiced, but a dried spice. It's not like a cidery note with that spice in there. It really is almost a condensed, almost dried apple, quite honestly, with almost a, with perhaps a little bit of a cranberry in the background, not a lot, heavy on your cinnamon and the clove and the brightness from that apple, really, really nice. For me, this is also decent for transitional. This is getting into like your September, October. And for me, I what I switched from this, I then switched to Tis the Season, which for me is an evolution of pumpkin apple because that one then kind of takes out the pumpkin, leaves a little bit of the apple in there, but adds then your kind of, kind of wreath or your, your evergreens and your balsams to it. But pumpkin apple is just spicy, not overly sweet, not particularly fresh to me, but still really bright. Love pumpkin apple, must have for the season. Then we go to the sister scent of autumn, quite honestly, and this one is perhaps the most classic Bath & Body Works autumn scent, and that is leaves. This one has been around for many years, sometime in the late aughts, like, I don't know, 2006, 7, 8, 9. By 2009, it was a returning favorite. That's when I started purchasing Beth Motto Works and Slack and Candles regularly. Notes in this one, crisp red apple, golden nectar, and warm clove spice. This one is much softer than, let's say, your autumn. They're, they're sister scents in the fact that they're both, you know, they have some similar notes. I think some people prefer one over the other. I, if I had to choose, actually prefer autumn. Leaves is really nice, though, because it does add, it's a bit deeper and darker a little bit more into the season than an early burn and it is richer and deeper where it doesn't have the eucalyptus or any sort of pomegranate or the balsam it's more so warm spices kind of some of the pumpkin apple spices but not not exactly warm spices with your apple but that golden nectar really brings a syrupy sweetness almost borderline cider you know i think spice apple toddy is basically like a watered down leaves in my opinion but this is closer to the cider sense, which they don't really do a spiced cider much anymore. But this is gonna be that, dare I say, almost syrupy, like a golden nectar, truly like a syrup. Not caramel, but just a sweet, sweet syrup mixed with that apple and the spices. So beautiful, beautiful. That's really a, a classic, one of the most classic scents for Bath & Body Works Fall. Then we go to my true all-time favorite, if I had to choose favorite fall scent. So autumn, is in maybe that category for going into it. I mean, what can I say? Bath & Body Works, especially the scents that, that were launched during the Slack & Co era, you know, mid-2000s to say 2012 are some of the ultimate best fall autumn fragrances. And this one is my number one if I had to choose, and that is Pumpkin Carving. So this one started as, my understanding, the perfect pumpkin. Then it became Pumpkin Patch. Then it became Heirloom Pumpkin. Then it became Pumpkin Carving. Then it was gone for three or four years, then it finally came back as pumpkin carving. And just the past two or three years, it's been coming back consistently, which is great, but I still stuck up on it because I never know when they're gonna get rid of it because for many years, Sweet Cinnamon Pumpkin was the main character. Pumpkin carving, I think, is finally getting the love it deserves. This, the packaging on this one is fine. I actually think last year's was a little more interesting, but to me, pumpkin carving name works because it is sort of that raw pumpkin versus a cooked pumpkin or an overly spiced pumpkin. But I think pumpkin patch, is a little bit better of a name because this doesn't really go like Halloween-y other than it being a fresh pumpkin. Notes on this, it has evolved over the years as far as the notes they put on it, but the scent thankfully has not changed. They say freshly carved pumpkin, spiced pumpkin seeds, and smooth brown sugar. Not to be confused with a pumpkin pie filling scent by any means. <sighs> it's 
it's just so authentic with the meat of the gourd. But they soften it with, again, they've said butter before and things like that. I don't get so much that, but the spiced pumpkin seeds, that's a new variation on the note. There is a nuttiness to it almost, like you're going to get from, you know, your roasted pumpkin butters and things like that. But whatever spices are in here are so muted in the background. It really lets the pumpkin, a little bit of those seeds, like roasted perhaps pumpkin seeds, which are super nutty, really tasty, as well as they say smooth brown sugar. I suppose that makes sense because this isn't just like a vegetal scent. There is a hint of sweetness to it, but it's very, very, very mild sweetness. It's just the best pumpkin. It's it's my favorite. It, this is an all season pumpkin for me because I burned this for so many years at this point, it's straight up nostalgic for me. It's just oh, pumpkin patch, whatever you want to, whatever pumpkin you want to call it. I'm just happy if they bring it back. And then we move on to, we've got four more. These are two are new to me and two are new period. First new period is Sunrise Woods. And this has that hammered copper lid. Notes on this one, creamy sandalwood, sweet berries, and cozy cashmere. Now I will say, I before I even sniff it, I'll tell you, I don't love this one. I may either give it away or perhaps exchange it. I have not burned it. I, I will never exchange a burned candle unless it truly performed terribly in say the first burn and there was something that was just made it defective essentially. This I know was a body care item, though I wasn't familiar with the body care item before this. And when I made this purchase, this is obviously a collective haul from a few different sales that they've had in the past couple of weeks, Bath & Body Works. This was not on the floor, but there were a few from this collection that I was interested in. And the sales associates were kind enough to go in the back and see what they had and bring it out so that I could sniff it and purchase it. And it was the only one they had that they could find in the back. And because they brought it out, even though I didn't love it, I, I didn't want to say, oh, thanks for the five minutes you took to look for it, I'm not going to purchase it. I figured I would purchase it, give it a shot, smell it at home without my mask on to see if there was something better I liked in it. It's not a bad scent by any means, but it is very much a traditional Bath & Body Works body care scent and not even particular fall. So notes on this one, creamy sandalwood, sweet berries, and cozy cashmere. Certainly the creamy sandalwood is in there, a sweetness, perhaps it's the berry, but again, very much body care. Cozy cashmere is difficult to say exactly what it is. That's obviously an accord. Not sure if they're just saying kind of blanket or if they mean cashmere like cashmere wood or cashmere wood, which in fine fragrance, cashmere wood is actually also an accord, not a true wood. And it's gonna be a blend of typically four scents, and that is ambergris, cedarwood, vanilla, and musk. So think of this just as sort of sweet, seductive musky when you think of ca cozy cashmere. And that's what this is. There's a brightness to it typical traditional Bath & Body Works body care fragrance. Nothing that is really super exciting and doesn't scream super autumnal to me. I think this could be almost year round, certainly a summer, like a late summer wildflower sort of deal. Though they don't mention flowers, there's certainly something floral in here. Not a huge fan of that. Again, I may exchange it or just gift it to someone. Then we go to one of the new new, and it's actually in the same collection as Autumn is with that wrap around, slightly embossed label, kind of muted colors, sort of a muted purple lavender here. And this one is Cuddle Weather. Notes on this one, warm gingerbread tea, cinnamon shortbread, a cozy blanket. Now with this one, this one truly is not gonna be, you know, it's not a cashmere blanket because it's certainly not sort of the accord note there. I truly believe when they say cozy blanket here, the note on this one is not a note that you're smelling. You know, it's not gonna be a textile or something like that. It really is just, the vibe that it's supposed to evoke or the concept it's supposed to bring to you, certainly with an, a conceptual name like Cuddle Weather. You would think maybe it would be related to Sweater Weather, but they are completely different, completely different scents. Sniffing this, I have burned this one. This is one of the few that I have burned here because I really wanted to see what it was like when it was lit. Uh, I wouldn't, I certainly would not buy it again. It's decent. The burn quality was okay. It had a pretty solid throw, but I was, it was kind of right next to me, but it's, 95% just a spiced gingerbread scent, not as spicy, a little bit more creamy uh, than just your true, you know, spiced gingerbread that you get sometimes at Christmas or holiday from Bath & Body Works. But it's mostly that with a bit of a milky creaminess, a bit of a tea. Again, they say the gingerbread tea and then cinnamon shortbread. I get very little cinnamon here and I don't particularly get a shortbread cookie, like a buttery, crumbly shortbread cookie at all. It really is the gingerbread. Gourmand, yes, bakery, mm, kinda. 
what they don't mention here is it's very milky and creamy. So that gingerbread tea, if that's what it, it is, is like a tea bag put in there and then it's like half milk, half water because it's super milky. Borderline like a creamy chai, but amped on the ginger, no cardamom, not like the anise or things like that that sometimes show up or the pepper that shows up in a chai. It's like a ginger creamy chai is what I would get from this. But again, very, very, very similar to your traditional spiced gingerbread from Bath & Body Works. But if they wanted to market that as a chai, it wouldn't shock me or a ginger chai. I could see that being that way too with truly like a warm cup of creamy chai, but not the best. Then we'll go to two new to me scents. One is sort of a cult classic now. I think it was in stores, then not in stores, then didn't come back, and now it's back in an online exclusive, and that is Pumpkin Peanut Brittle. I believe I did smell this a few years ago. I passed on it. I've never purchased it before. Online exclusive now. I figured I wanted to give it a try because I really have been enjoying the one Homeworks candle that I think is potentially similar to this, at least based on the name, and that is the Peanut Butter Waffle Cone by Homeworks. I did a review. You can check it out here if you have not seen that. I think it may still be available on QVC or every once in a while it popped up on the homeworks.shop website, may or may not come back unclear. But for me, that one was not really peanut butter and was not a waffle cone. I dug deep into that when I did my in-depth sniff comparison review. And for me, I actually thought they should have named it like a toasted peanut brittle because it really smelled like peanut brittle to me and I like it. And I burned it a little in the spring, didn't burn it throughout the summer. And just recently I burned it once or twice, sort of mid morning and the warm sort of nuttiness that came out was really nice. And so I was like, well, you know what? Maybe I'll try the pumpkin peanut brittle, which is probably not pumpkin. Anything in these collections, the pop pumpkn collections from Bath & Body Works are typically a bakery. They put pumpkin in it, but it's spices. It's just whatever else they call it, whether it's cinnamon bun or peanut brittle or whatever it might be, there's very rarely, you know, pumpkin uh, notes in it. And this one actually intrigued me as well because the Bath & Body Works released, I don't know if it was an Instagram reel or a Facebook post or something, once or twice in the past year, interviews with their perfumers. So they don't, I guess, always or ever, not entirely sure, use in-house perfumers. They actually work with some of the big fragrance houses to build, again, some, all, not sure exactly much. They don't give us the peak behind the scenes a whole lot, but some of their fragrance blends. And so, you know, whether it's the Giva Dawn or other houses, they interviewed one or two folks. I think one was the man who came up with Barry Waffle Cone and a few others. And then one was a woman who came up with Pumpkin Peanut Brittle. And what was so fascinating is, and this goes behind the marketing and just the power of suggestion when it comes to fragrance notes. She was talking about when she was building a scent, she said that they had new things come into their her palette where she was working with, where she could add some different notes that she hadn't before. And I think one of them might've been sesame seed or sesame oil. And I think they may have actually posted this as part of Bath & Butter Works celebration of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month earlier this year, or perhaps even last year. And so she was talking about how interesting it was to be able to add something like a sesame note to a, a fragrance, a gourmand fragrance and something that was sort of Asian inspired. And so she ended up landing on this blend that we know as pumpkin peanut brittle, but to know that there's something, the nuttiness in there, maybe peanut, maybe not peanut, it actually could be sesame, but we interpret it as how it's branded, which is I think just so interesting as as how, you know, top, middle, bottom notes are built. I would love to see the true, not the marketed notes, but the true notes that the perfumers actually created and actually used to build scents. Fascinating, right? So all that to say, we have to go on how they market it because otherwise it's pure guests which we also will do. Notes on this crunchy caramel brittle, salty peanuts, and toasted pumpkin seeds. Now I will say right off the jump, this one on cold here, it's it's fairly light. And I'm a, I think what I've heard is it's kind of a, a powerhouse for a lot of folks. I know that Kent of the Candle Channel describes it as sort of a buttery Ritz cracker with peanut butter on it. And I, I'm not, I'm just not getting enough. I may end up doing, if I like it, Maybe if I don't like it, I'll do an in-depth sniff comparison review because there is certainly plenty to compare this to. But on this cold, it's just a little bit tangy to me and I'm not sure what the tanginess is coming from. It's truly lighter than almost any other candle I've smelled here, which is a little strange. I'm so excited to dig in. I, I hope it doesn't have that odd tanginess because it actually reminds me of sometimes like the, uh, is it pumpkin cinnamon bun or like pumpkin cheesecake that just has like a sour milk note. I'm getting some of that on cold. Maybe it's a different lid. I don't really... No, but on cold, I can see why I passed on it in the stores, quite honestly. But I'm gonna give it a burn and hopefully it completely changes and opens up. And then another new to me, but 
perhaps fan favorite-ish, not entirely sure, banana walnut muffin. I'm happy to say, though, again, a lot of folks may already know this, this is different than the banana bundt cake, which I did purchase and reviewed earlier this spring, an early spring haul or, or late winter haul 2022, and it smelled okay, kind of artificial, kind of syn very synthetic, and it didn't burn great. It got kind of dank and smoky and grody halfway down. It just wasn't a great candle. I'm hoping this one will be better. Notes on this one, sweet banana, golden nutmeg, cinnamon sugar muffin. Okay interesting. I, I'm not, you know, I'm kind of, I can be, get behind this sort of watercolor thing here. I'm not the hugest fan of, like, this feels like, uh, like, I don't know, high school varsity football in the fall or something, which is nothing against that, but it's not a bakery vibe for me, but it's okay. This is decent. Um, you know, there was, in 2011, when Slack & Co. did a huge, I think, honestly, one of the best autumns and Christmas holiday winters ever with Bath & Body Works, they launched cinnamon nut bread, which really was banana bread, similar to, you know, your muffin, whether it's muffin or it's bread, whatever. Um, that really was the most authentic banana bread, nut bread, whatever, that I've ever smelled. And it was one and done. It never came back. It, it may not even have gone wide. I'm not entirely sure because I purchased them at a test store at the time. I was hoping this would be similar to that. It's not as warm and, and rich as that one was. But again, certainly feels more authentic than say the banana bundt cake. The banana still has that bit of that artificial, a little bit nutty, a bit of that sweet cinnamon. It's a very, very sweet cinnamon that's in there. Some burnt sugar crystals on top. It's nice, it's decent. I'm curious to see how it comes out warmed. I, some of the banana, there's a bit of a little bit of a tanginess to it. It's giving me a little bit of a similarity to banana maple pancakes from Homeworks which to me, I get a little bit of like a slight tanginess versus a creaminess from the banana. I'm not sure why that is, almost like overripe banana, I suppose. But I'm willing to give this a shot. It seems decent and not overly cloying, but it's not super, super warm or bakery to me. Certainly gourmand, sweet, but I wish there was more of the, the breadiness to it or, the, or that muffin, that cakiness to it. So, but I'll give it a shot. I know a lot of folks do love this. And if anything, it'll be a good sort of morning scent when I don't necessarily want something too, too heavy with, you know, a cup of coffee. Let's dig quickly into the four single wicks I purchased during the 650 single wick sale. First up, I just got another pumpkin carving. Again, any way that they sell this, I will grab this. It's just the best. Of course, same notes here. They actually, I feel like for a while they were not putting fragrance notes on the bottom, but they actually have them here. Freshly carved pumpkin, spiced cinnamon seeds, smooth brown sugar. So I'm glad that they're having notes on there. It's just, you can't go wrong with that. Also from the Halloween collection, I actually purchased two of Spooky Cider Lane. Cider Lane came out, I want to say 2012 during the Slack & Co era. For me, the best caramel apple. They've had literally two variations of straight up caramel apple, as well as, you know, some ciders, different apples and caramels. That screams fall. Well. There's so many variations of that. But Cider Lane is the absolute most authentic, the best, best, best. I'll have to do maybe a history of or in-depth comparison review, something like that later this fall or some other, you know, favorite fall candle video or something where I talk about Cider Lane more in depth. It just is the best of the best. And it's, it's much forgotten with Bath & Body Works for the past four to six years. Many years, it doesn't come back at all. The couple years that it has, it's either been a throwaway and one-off packaging that's not like a primary collection of the season or an online exclusive. They use the wrong notes in the bottom of it. It just doesn't get the love. I don't know why, because it's, I can't imagine even the most mainstream, simple shopper who just wants to come in and get something straightforward, like a caramel apple, why they wouldn't want it. And with a name like Cider Lane, again, it just, it all fits. I don't get it. If the sales aren't there, I truly don't understand it. Notes on this one, they're wrong. <laughs> it says bourbon glazed apples, magical maple syrup, and voodoo vanilla. I believe those may be the notes for bourbon maple something. But essentially, this is going to be a fresh green apple and a caramel, like a caramel dip, essentially. It's just, you get that sharp brightness from like the green apple skin. You get, you get that traditional caramel dip where it's a little bit thickened, not a butterscotchy, not as sweet as it is, not cloying because there's enough, you know, heavy cream or whatever in there, almost a little bit of that burnt edge because caramel's essentially burnt sugar. It's just beautiful. So also again, I figured because I could get them in store and they were 650, 
decided to get two of the spooky cider lanes. Cider lane cannot go wrong. And the final one to do a quick review on, Harvest Pomegranate, which I believe is also coming in a three wick. I purchased this last year or the year before, once or twice. I can't remember if this is the second or third year that this one has been out. I like it. For me, it's very similar to Autumn, but not as good as Autumn. But it's a, a close sister scent, even within the notes for Autumn. The notes they're telling us this year, rich pomegranate, freshly picked apples, sweet black plums. I really liked it last year. This year it smells okay, but... I don't know if it's this formulation, because I think I smelled a three wick in the store. Again, I was wearing a mask, so that mutes some notes. It's always hard to tell like which notes it's muting. It really depends on what fragrance molecules are gonna come through the mask. That one smelled a little bit brighter and sweeter and juicier. This one smells almost like a bit of a Play-Doh scent to it, which is kind of weird. Not entirely, like it's certainly Harvest Pomegranate, but there's something else in this formula that is just a little bit muting of some of the scents but certainly you get that sweetness. I, I do think there's gotta be something, some sort of wood in here, like an apple wood or something like that. It's not just pomegranate, apples, and plums. It's not just fruit, fruit, fruit. There's a bit of a wood in here. And it's nice, it is an early transition into fall before you get into your heavier your cranberry woods and your leaves and things like that. So it is fresh, it is outdoors, but comparing to autumn really quickly, much stronger, more conceptual, more notes in this. There's a lot more going on with the eucalyptus and the balsam and it just is a much more balanced scent. This one is like a couple of top notes thrown together with one base on. It just feels more simplistic. Like you could buy this truly anywhere. So I don't know that I'll be getting more than this one. I'm gonna give it a shot in this. Hopefully the, the Play-Doh-y kind of scent goes away and it's as good as it was the first time I bought it. But for me, it's just kind of like, if it, I'd rather burn autumn. So all I would say, that is my admittedly somewhat long uh, Bath & Body Works White Barn Candle Co. haul and first impressions review. Let me know what you purchased so far. This is also admittedly the first of at least a good handful of fall autumn hauls across the board, but especially for Bath & Body Works, that is where a bulk of my true seasonal fragrances come from, even though I'm exploring many other brands and, and things like that. I'll have plenty more reviews coming up. Let me know what you think of these, if there's any you love, you hate. If you want to see any in-depth sniff or in-depth sniff comparison reviews on any of these scents, I would be happy to dig into those as well. And until next time, take care.